Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely Doomer day. It's December 27th, and I wanted to focus on a publication written in Wired Magazine Online Edition from Bill McGuire. For the record, I just wanted to read this. William J. McGuire is a volcanologist and emeritus professor of geophysical and climate hazards at the University of College London. His main interests include volcano instability and lateral collapse, the nature and impact of geophysical events and the effects of climate change on geological hazards. He's 68 years old. He's produced several pieces of literature, most recently a book entitled Hot House Earth, an Inhabitant's Guide. You can all imagine what that's about. So, for today's video, I just want to primarily focus on this one article written, though I'm certain many of my subscribers have already seen it. I'm just going to read it. The headline is as follows. El Nino is coming and the world isn't prepared. Global heating will set the stage for extreme weather everywhere in 2023. The consequences are like to be likely to be cataclysmic. From the top, in 2023, the relentless increase in global heating will continue, bringing ever more disruptive weather that is signature calling card of accelerating climate breakdown. According to NASA, 2022 was the hottest years ever recorded on Earth. This is extraordinary because the recurrent climate patterns across the tropical Pacific, known as ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation, was in its cool phase. During this phase, called La Nina, the waters of the equatorial Pacific are noticeably cooler than normal, which influences weather patterns around the world. One consequence of La Nina is that it helps keeping a lid on global temperatures. This means that despite the recent widespread heat waves, wildfires, and droughts, we have actually been spared the worst. The scary thing is that La Nina will end and eventually transition into better known El Nino, which sees, the which sees the waters of the equatorial Pacific becoming much warmer. When it does, the extreme weather that has rampaged across our planet in 2021 and 2022 will pale into insignificance. Current forecasts suggest that La Nina will continue into early 2023, making it fortuitously for us one of the longest on record. It began in spring 2020. Then, the equatorial Pacific will move to warm again. Whether or not it becomes hot enough for a fully-fledged El Nino to develop, 2023 has a very good chance, without the cooling influence of La Nina, of being the hottest year on record. A global temperature rise of 1.5 degrees Celsius is widely regarded as marking a guardrail beyond which climate breakdown becomes dangerous. Above this figure, our once stable climate will begin to collapse in earnest, becoming all-pervasive, affecting everyone, and insulating itself into every aspect of our lives. In 2021, the figure, compared to the 1850 to 1900 base average, was 1.2 degrees Celsius, while in 2019, before the development of the latest La Nina, it was a worryingly 1.36 degrees Celsius. As the heat builds again in 2023, it is perfect, perfectly possible that we will touch or even exceed 1.5 C for the first time. But what does all this mean exactly? I wouldn't be at all surprised to see the record for the highest temperature recorded currently in Death, California's Death Valley, 129 degrees Fahrenheit, shattered. This could well happen somewhere in the Middle East or South Asia, where temperatures could climb above 55 degrees Celsius. The heat could exceed the blistering 40 degrees Celsius mark again in the UK, and for the first time top 50 degrees Celsius in parts of Europe. Inevitably, higher temperatures will mean that severe drought will continue to be the order of the day, slashing crop yields in many parts of the world. In 2022, extreme weather resulted in reduced harvests in China, India, South America, and Europe, increasing food insecurity. Stocks are likely to be lower than normal going into 2023, so another round of poor harvests could be devastating. Resulting food shortages in most countries could drive civil unrest, while rising prices in developed countries will continue to stoke inflation and the cost of living crisis. One of the worst affected regions will be the southwest United States. Here, the longest drought in at least 1,200 years has persisted for 22 years so far, reducing the lake level of Lake Mead and the Colorado River so much that the power generation capacity 
at the Hoover Dam has fallen by almost half. The Glen Canyon Dam on the rapidly shrinking Lake Powell is forecasted to stop generating power in 2023 if the drought continues. The Hoover Dam could follow suit in 2024. Together, these lakes and dams provide water and power for millions of people in seven states, including California. The breakdown of this supply would be catastrophic for agriculture, industry, and populations right across the region. La Nina tends to limit hurricane development in the Atlantic, so as it begins to fade, hurricane activity can be expected to pick up. The higher global temperatures expected in 2023 could see extreme heating of the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico surface waters. This could favor the formation of persistent super hurricanes, powering winds and storm surges capable of wiping out a major U.S. city should they strike land. Direct hits rather than a glancing blow are rare, the re closest in recent decades it being Hurricane Andrew in 1992, which made landfall immediately south of Miami, obliterating more than 60,000 homes and damaging 125,000 more. Hurricanes today are both more powerful and wetter, so that the consequences of city getting in the way of Superstorm in 2023 would be cataclysmic. These are just a few of the knockoff effects should we enter El Nino, which at this rate is considered a greater than 50% probability. And we're already breaching the 1.5 degree Paris Agreement. How does this go in six or seven years if we're going at this rate? How do we not keep pumping out enormous amounts of greenhouse gases with our globalized industrial civilization? Yes, my subscribers are very privy to this information, so I don't need to reiterate it much more. But given that countries are shooting missiles and flying drones over each other's airspace, hint, hint, wink, wink, North Korea. Um, I don't see how this is going to have a peaceful resolve with climate scratching every surface of land, um, obliterating our resources. It will be, as Bill McGuire puts out, puts it, cataclysmic. All right, if you like this content, hit like and subscribe. I appreciate you, Doomers. I'll talk to you later. Have a lovely Doomer day. See ya.